This is a 2005 Toyota 4Runner with a V8. But Doug DeMuro's never really reviewed a 2005 4Runner V8. So today, I'm going to walk you through some quirks and features of this awesome Toyota 4Runner build. Big news before we get started, this 2005 4Runner is actually for sale right now on the adventureindex.com. It has the desirable V8, is fully armored, and has an overland camping setup in the back that can support you through any weekend adventure. So if you're interested or know someone who might be, go ahead and go to theadventureindex.com or click the link in the description down below. Now I purchased this 4Runner completely stock in 2015. There was four previous owners and I wanted something that I could build out from start to finish as a first full vehicle build. It's given me a reliable 17 miles per gallon despite all the gear that I have on it. I've camped in it over 200 nights and it's carried me through blizzards, the Tahoe National Forest, the Mojave Desert, California's Big Sur, even up the Lost Coast all the way to Oregon. This 4Runner does it all. The new 5th Gen 4Runner is great, especially with some of its TRD options. However, one area where it fell short is payload. Because of the smaller motor, because it didn't have the towing package capability, it wasn't able to better support a lot of this heavy equipment that you need to bring with you in order to have a full-fledged week-long, weeks-long adventure. And in recent years, especially since the pandemic, a lot of people have realized that getting outside Enjoying the great outdoors is highly desirable. Now, as much as we would love to follow what you see on Instagram all the time of these weeks long adventures all the way up to the peak of Alaska, down south through Patagonia, that's not realistic. And so I, what I wanted to build was something that would allow you to leave on a Friday or a Thursday after work, get out of town, set up camp in about five minutes and truly enjoy the great outdoors. We'll start with the back here with the dual CBI swing out rear bumper. Now. For the person who buys this vehicle, please note it does come with an additional CBI table that folds down from here and from here. What it does have in the back though, is this rear storage cabinet that doubles as a flat surface. And for anyone who's camping knows, flat surfaces come at a premium and it's very nice to have. Not to mention you can still or a lot of your recovery gear, fire extinguisher, fuel siphon, all right here. Now I have a five gallon gas jerry tank that came in very handy in the Mojave Desert. And also equally important, if not more important, is the five gallon water tank that I have with an instant tap for easy access. Now on my left side here, we have a brand new 33 inch KO2 tire. You can also see that there's a high lift jack. This jack is for when you're really stuck. You know, one time I was really buried deep in the sand and that high lift jack, that farm jack came in use to get under the sliders and be able to lift the vehicle out. Now, before I open the back, I did want to highlight just two features, the Gobi rear ladder, and the rear window. Now the latter may be obvious. When setting up camp, there's a compounding effect of all the little things you do to get ready. And this is one less thing to set up, especially for accessing the roof or rooftop tent that you don't have to worry about. Now I mentioned the rear window. This is actually very desirable in the overlanding world and also the forerunner world. And what it is, is the ability to roll down this rear window and have air flowing through from the front to the back. And when you're driving through a pine forest, there's almost nothing better than having the two front windows rolled down, this all the way down as well, and air flowing freely from front to back. Now onto the back. When you open the back, you can see that the Toyota 4Runner is not like your average Toyota 4Runner. There's a full custom modular cabinet system, which has a refrigerator, onboard air, power connections, an entire camping storage setup on the left, and on the right, an entire slide out kitchen setup. One interesting quirk is up above here. There's actually two rigid boat deck lights that were hardwired in for a white light and a red light. And that's for once again, when you're setting up camp, one less thing to illuminate your space. Now I mentioned this is a modular system. This system, which you can download build plans for if you'd like to make your own on the adventureindex.com, took over 30 hours of building, hundreds of hours of development, and it's completely modular. So if you wanted to leave the two sides in and remove the two middle drawers, you could. If you wanted to leave just one drawer or another drawer, you could as well. It even has a little storage cubby in the rear. When you think about a system like this, you worry, uh-oh, is it too permanent? Is it going to ruin the value of the vehicle? And the answer is no. It connects in a seamless way to OEM mounting points and is easily removable and reverted back to stock with no issues. We've got aircraft grade tie downs that are light aluminum, but also nice to the touch and easy to use and maneuver for securing your cargo. It was finished with Monster Liner, which is a chemical bonding style bed liner that is smooth to the touch, but waterproofs and seals in the, the quality of the wood. 
Now I mentioned the quality of the wood. This is actually cabinet grade, half inch Baltic birch. So it's the perfect optimization of a nice material that is lightweight enough, but also rigid enough to deal with all of the gear and kind of abuse it might get on the trail. On the right hand side here is the kitchen drawer. To open it, you simply push the latch down to unlock it, pull on the nice leather handle here, and you get your kitchen. You have a 22 inch dual burner, partner steel, camping stove, got pots and pans, fire starter, olive oil, hand soap, towels, and even a fold out bucket to wash your dishes. Now nestled within this though, is another camping drawer. Two more latches, an extent, and you've got your utensils down below and a nice cutting surface or prep surface on top. Well, what happens if I need to get to the utensils or plates below? And what if I have a, a cup on top? Well, we here at the Adventure Index thought of that. And we installed floating hinges that keep your prep surface level. That way, if someone needs to come over and grab some spices or anything underneath, you're able to do so without disrupting your cook surface. And the left drawer is for all of your camping support and gear. It locks into place just like the kitchen drawer does. You have your Outer Limit Supply medical kit with everything from band-aids to blood clot. You've got a multi-tool, something to help me air up tires and check my pressure. A hammock, just to set up camp right away, of course. Toiletries, and then a bug out bag. Now, the way this drawer is organized is not to make you go digging through things. Instead, I want it to be, of course, once again, very usable. And I've cut out pieces of foam, and you can see where something's missing. If it's not there, you need to go find it in your camp. But also, you don't have to dig through to the bottom of this 10-inch drawer just to get one little thing. So instead I've made layers. Simply lift from the bottom and you have your next layer. This layer, as you can see, has playing cards, everything electrical really, from chargers to flashlights to even LED string lights, but then also essentials like bear spray and a silky saw. On to the last one, you can seize all of my tools. This is organized, so you can find that pesky 10 millimeter socket no matter what day it is. But it also has torque wrench, oil filter, Allen wrenches, and it's really, of course, come in key to always have a full tool kit with you in the great outdoors. Now, removing this, you'll see the drawer is actually ready for anything that you'd like to kit it out with. Any types of hobbies that you want to have a orderly place to store your gear and have a great weekend, th this is a great way to do it. Now, moving on to the side cabinets, you'll see and on the right side here, you have your fuse box, solar charger, power inverter, solar plug-in, cigarette plug connection, and USB. Now on the left side in this compartment, we have permanently mounted an air compressor. You can turn on your onboard air here if the vehicle is on. And this really comes in useful when you're getting off-road. You know, your suspension can do a lot, but really when you're out there camping, you also want something that avoids punctures, smooths out the ride. And a lot of people, what they do is they air down their tires. Now onto the fridge. That's right, refrigerator. This is a 47 liter, ARB refrigerator. And you might think, hey, that's kind of small, especially if I'm going on a big weekend trip, camping or adventuring, like this vehicle is supposed to bring me out into the middle of nowhere. And that might be true if it was a cooler. But because it's a fridge, you have essentially double the capacity. And when it's connected to solar, or even just the second battery that I have, this can essentially run in perpetuity without ever running out of power. You might ask, well, how the hell do you get in there? That's not really easy, right? So instead what we've done, is we've mounted it to this aloe cap sliding tray. Grab what you need. Moving to the front of this Toyota 4Runner, although the front bumper really had nothing wrong with it to begin, other than a couple of scrapes from not having enough approach angle, I unfortunately have had the, the pleasure of uh, totaling a car thanks to a, a deer before. So it's not just for aesthetics and its aggressive off-road looks, but really it serves as protection in case Bambi decides that the stock market last year was just too tough. It's thick steel, supports the lights that I need, has a great approach angle, and protects vital components like the transmission cooler, radiator, and lights. Now it also serves, surprisingly, as a really good aid for parking. Let me explain. This front is the frontmost peak of the vehicle. It sticks out the furthest. What's nice about that is you can actually see it from the driver's seat. So I can actually parallel park this vehicle a lot easier than my normal sedan. Now I mentioned it's got some lights here. These are rigid dually lights. This is SAE DOT approved for a fog light. 
Now these are dual purpose floodlights. So when you get to camp at 11 o'clock, especially in the great outdoors, you wanna make sure that camp, whatever it may be, is the right setup. So these illuminate the path that are extremely bright and really helps you get to where you want, no matter the conditions or time of day. Under the vehicle, you'll notice some serious metal as well. One of the most common and most expensive mistakes you can make in off-roading is cresting over a hill or a rock and coming down on the vital components of your vehicle. As you can see, the front skid plates protect the engine and transmission, while the white knuckle rock sliders protect your rocker panels and doors when navigating low clearances. They're also capable of holding on to the entire weight of the vehicle, and even your mom's friends if they want to hang on to the side and pretend that they're SWAT. Moving on, we have the roof rack. This is a Gobi roof rack. It has two mounts for the VHF and UHF radio antenna, as well as the CB radio antenna for communications. It has mounts for an awning, and then of course the mounts for the rooftop tent, which is very important when getting off road. If you arrive late at night to somewhere that doesn't have flat campsites, or you just don't wanna be down below next to the tarantulas of Big Sur, trust me, sleeping up here in essentially a tempur mattress, second to none. Now this tent, quite frankly, is a product that I could do a full video on itself. There's an LED light, there is a fan powered by solar power, and a 360 degree view of what's ever around you when you go camping. What's nice about it though, is you don't have to bring that separate memory foam and bedding and all the other nonsense with you to take up space in the vehicle. You simply undo the four latches on the outside and voila. Now, as I mentioned, this is an off-roader. And although I got it because I enjoy camping, the reason why I got it is because I hate camping near people. And everywhere you go, especially lately, there's more and more people. So you need to get more and more remote. And in order to get more remote, you need to have some meaty tires. So these are 33 inch BF Goodrich KO2s mounted to some aggressive looking Pro Comp Extreme tire. Now to support this, I actually have a three inch Overland Springs lift from Icon Vehicle Dynamics in the rear. I also have from Metal Tech 4x4, we have lower links. I also have rear and front sway bar disconnects. Moving to the front suspension, you'll see that this is lifted three inches with an adjustable front coilover from Icon Vehicle Dynamics. I used to have a second gen 4Runner that was built for more pre-running Baja style driving. And I, I chose the Total Chaos upper control arms because I know it can take abuse like this. <laughs> so now that you believe me, this front suspension can do it all. It can support the weight, articulate, and get over any train you need to get to your favorite campsites and away from all those pesky people. Now under the hood of this 2005 4Runner, you'll see the coveted V8. This engine will go to half a million miles reliably with little to no issues. Now you might notice something else. There's second radiator, that's actually your transmission cooler. And that's part of the reason why these cars are so desired is it has the OEM equipment to keep it cool despite the extra payload designed for towing or supporting your camping adventures. So there's two batteries under the hood here. This isn't a mistake. If you're in the middle of the desert, the forest, and you need to jump, you can't flag someone down and say, hey, my battery's dead. So you have to be self-reliant. Now moving to the rear of this vehicle, you'll see it's a bench seat. And in true Toyota fashion, there are no rips or tears in it. It stood up perfectly well to the test of time and looks practically brand new. It also has a center armrest that has a drink holder, which is a bit quirky here. It has some adjustable springs for the different size big gulps that you might want to get. But also, I'm a six foot man. And I fit very comfortably. We've actually had this 4Runner full with four adults going camping and all of their gear and it supported us just fine for a weekend adventure. Looking at the rear of the center console, you'll notice that there's this silver bar right at the bottom. It's actually a fold-up trash holder, which is kind of unusual. But I guess if you've got little kids or no one in the back and you'd rather hang a trash bag there on these little hooks on the side, you can in this Toyota 4Runner. Moving to the front of the Toyota 4Runner, you'll see that there is a normal door pocket with some normal Toyota switches However, there's this window lock button. What's interesting about it is if you hit this button, even though you're the driver, you can't move the rear passenger windows until you unlock it and then they'll operate. Moving to the front cabin of this Toyota 4Runner, you'll see it stood up well to the test of time. To the left-hand side of the steering wheel, you'll see there's a series of buttons allowing you to control the battery management system in red, the rear side curtain airbags for serious off-roading, the center locking differential and traction control system, as well as uh, your high beams, just in case someone is driving without proper manners or you're going to camp late at night. 
Now in the center console, you'll see there's also a button for downhill assist control, uh, which is actually pretty unique with Toyota, where it uses the brakes and the A-Track system to control each individual wheel that is not receiving traction one by one. And then above the aircon controls, you'll see that there is a doubled in upgraded stereo with not only GPS, but also a rear view camera that looks past the fridge and spare tire. The final and quite possibly the best quirk and feature of this Toyota 4Runner is this glove box. Now to the naked eye, this might just look like a normal glove box. But sure enough, when you open this glove box, you'll see inside there's another hidden glove box. And you can open that and keep inside some cash, your registration, other illicit things. But definitely not expected to have a hidden glove box within your glove box for this Toyota 4Runner. And that was my 2005 Toyota 4Runner with the V8, four-wheel drive, overland camping setup, rooftop tent, and communications to take care of you. This was a, a passion project of mine, and I hope that comes through from the forum posts linked below, as well as in this video. I, I really did try to build this to the best of my ability as a well-thought-out vehicle that supports any adventures that you might go on, whether it be for a weekend or weeks at a time. A big thank you to Doug DeMuro, who inspired the style of this video. As you can tell, I'm a big fan myself here of Doug DeMuro. And I'll tell you what, Doug, th this is a lot harder than it, than it looks on camera. So kudos to you. To those of you who don't know of Doug, head over to his YouTube channel. Makes fantastic content that does a lot better job than me at walking through vehicles like this. Now, as for why I'm selling this 4Runner, and, and I might regret, I probably will regret selling this 4Runner, but my life has changed a lot in the past few years. My wife and I got married. We have a couple of dogs now, and we don't just quite leave the area as much as we used to. And while you can tell from my Carfax report that I don't drive this vehicle that much other than my two mile commute to and from work, it pains me to see that. So I've decided to list this vehicle to hopefully hand off the keys to someone who wants to take it on those adventures and get out into the great outdoors more often than I can do myself. If you're interested in just the drawer system, you can go to the adventureindex.com forward slash shop. So for $40 or better yet with the discount code adventure, $30, you can actually download the blueprints for this exact drawer system and work with a local cabinet maker or builder or even your son or daughter or friend to build those drawers right at home. If I have it for 5th Gen 4Runner, 4th Gen 4Runner, Tacoma, other pickups, and people have really adapted them for almost any other vehicle. I've seen them in Volvos, wagons, I've seen them in 2nd Gen 4Runners, I've even seen them in a Tesla. Uh, so if you're interested in the blueprints, go ahead and head there. Now, if you're looking to not build those drawers and instead buy a vehicle that already does it all, perhaps this Toyota 4Runner, you can go once again to the adventureindex.com. Thank you for watching the video. Feel free to subscribe below. And once again, links are in the description to see the listing for this Toyota 4Runner or the blueprint plans for the drawers themselves. Thank you again.